there aren't a lot of great hacks for memorizing the kinematics equations, so this one more than most relies purely on rote memorization, but it is a very high yield topic, so just commit these formulas to memory. The ones in black are really core kinematics ones that aren't absolutely intuitive. These two are more straightforward. The average is simply adding the two values and dividing it by two. The final velocity is found by looking at the initial velocity and adding acceleration times time. This is one of the most important kinematics equations that you can be using. One way to kind of remember this one is to realize that the first part is position, then velocity, which is the change in position over time, and acceleration, which is the change in velocity over time. So it's position, velocity, and acceleration, and the level to which you multiply by time increases as you move right. You go from nothing at all or t to the zero power, then t to the first power, and then t squared. So that can be an important way to remember that. Kinematics, like most other things in physics, involves resolving angles into vertical and horizontal pieces. So you'll be able to solve for the vertical kinematics component as well as solving for the horizontal kinematics and these formulas will hold true when you're solving for vertical or horizontal. So just make sure to orient yourself well and to resolve those angles into their vertical and horizontal pieces. Other things to consider are whether time is provided or not. This is often the highest yield, most effective kinematics formula you can use, but if you're not given time, then it's more likely you'll have to rely on this formula here, perhaps the falling object that starts from rest formula, or any of these other components that do not involve time as a part of that formula. Note that the falling object can only work if it starts from rest. So an object has to start from rest, then fall a certain distance in order for you to use the velocity equals the square root of 2gh. The last thing to consider is that kinematics is only one way you can solve physics problems. It could be that a problem that at first looks like a kinematics problem, perhaps a car that has been put into neutral and is sliding to rest by friction, it seems like because you might know the forces and accelerations that are at play and you know the initial velocity, you might think that is something that could be solved most easily using kinematics. And that sometimes can be the case. But sometimes, rather than using kinematics, you can instead solve it as a conservation of energy or a work-based problem. And so be aware of times when you have kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared, and you can calculate the amount of work done over a distance and treat it as conservation of energy rather than by treating it as a kinematics problem. So if you're struggling with a kinematics problem that just where all of the pieces aren't coming together, maybe it's time to change that framework into something like a conservation of energy, conservation of momentum, or some other type of problem that you can use to solve that. Otherwise, let these things all be committed to memory and turn the kinematics formulas into your friend, and they will treat you very well on your MCAT. Thank you.